We're going to begin this hour, though, with more on the potential impact of last night's debate between President Biden and former President Trump, where both presumptive nominees were looking to convince voters they are fit for office. It's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest border in the history of our country. The border, all he had to do was leave it. All he had to do was leave it. Let's you see Biden stumbled through many of his answers last night while Trump repeatedly made several false claims about his record in office. CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent, that's Robert Costa, joins us now from Atlanta. He was there last night. Bob, good morning to you. Listen, we all know you have some of the best sources in the business. I'm curious, curious about what the Democrats are saying to you this morning. What are you hearing? Good morning, Gail. Good to be with all of you. Look, after anyone goes to a concert or to a movie, there's always that chatter in the aftermath. And we're still living in the immediate aftermath of last night's debate. But I've been working the phone scale, talking to people close to President Biden who work inside the White House, who work at the highest ranks of the Biden campaign. And let me be clear, based on my reporting, there is no push to get President Biden to leave the stage, to somehow give up the nomination at the convention in Chicago this summer. This is someone who has been in public office since 1972 when he was elected to the Senate, before that in local office in Delaware. For a half century, he has navigated power, hung on, climbed back from different defeats. And they don't see him walking away, despite all of the clamor, even inside of his party right now. They are listening, though, to elected officials, especially those who are speaking publicly, not privately, and they know they need to get better in terms of his performance in the coming weeks. They expect Biden to work hard to maybe meet more voters, do more interviews. They acknowledge it's a poor performance, but there is no move to get him off the ticket. But how do they explain a poor, a poor performance like that when the stakes are so high? He had one job to do last night, Bob. Just one, really. So part of the argument I'm hearing from top Democrats, Gail, is that it's not just President Biden who's going to be making this case. You're going to see more from Vice President Harris, more from top Democrats, and they're going to pour millions and millions into television advertising to try to remind voters that in their view, this election is about former President Donald Trump, his character, his conduct, not about one debate. Now, this debate has had a searing effect on how a lot of people in the party perceive President Biden. They know that. They're in a pain position today, a lot of them, when I've spoken to them on the phone, all these text messages. At the same time, in politics, a day can sometimes be a lifetime, and there are many days ahead of November. You know, Bob, we don't have the ratings on last night's simulcast debate. It was on CNN, it was on CBS, it was on ABC, it was on everybody. We don't know what the numbers were, but Joe Biden is a president who gave fewer press conferences and major interviews than any president in decades. You have to go back to Reagan or even before that. He passed up the Super Bowl interview on CBS this year, just didn't want to do it. That's tens of millions of people. What, how do you expect him to make this pivot that apparently people inside the White House expect him to do when he has not been out there, not in 2020 and not until now? It's not so much a pivot. It's going to be shining an, an even brighter spotlight on Trump. They look at the schedule and they look at the calendar and they say Trump has sentencing in New York. He faces a possible jail sentence on July 11th. We'll be covering that closely. Then there's the Republican convention, the running mate. Can he bring the attention to democracy in Trump? Can he bring it back to abortion rights? He tried during the debate, I'm told by his top advisors. They wish he did more of it at times. And in terms of interviews, he's not someone who really likes the press at this time. Since day one of his campaign, I have been told by his closest friends, he's been frustrated with press coverage. People he thinks in the press think he's too old. He's covered in a way he believes is ageist. And that has really influenced how he does interviews, how he interacts with the press. And that's just the status quo inside of Biden world. Well, look, I work for the I work for the media. I'm in the press, but I talk to regular people. That's my whole job. And regular people have those concerns. And that's why we're talking about them. Uh, Bob, thank you very much. Appreciate that reporting. We'll stick with it.